Hey there aspiring chemist. In this video I'm going to teach you how you can make a common household product at home and even if you're interested in chemistry or you're not interested in chemistry I assure you that you will enjoy this video as long as you watch from the beginning to the end and if you appreciate my methods or you find this video interesting remember to hit the like button and share it with your friends and others so they can enjoy the same benefits. Well, as you know, in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can make bleach or sodium hypochlorite. Well, there are actually two methods to this. I'm going to discuss one in this video and discuss the second one in another video. Well, the first method requires you using materials you can find at home. And these materials are water, your kitchen or your table salt, and a DC output what I got, see the two terminals. But if you notice, these materials that are listed here are the same materials I listed in my video make hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide at home. So what's the difference? Well, in this video, only one container will be needed for the electrolytic setup. And if you remember from that video I just mentioned, I said that whenever you do electrolysis of a concentrated salt solution, chlorine gas will be released. So if you're going to perform this experiment, it must be outside or in a fume hood. Now that I'm outside, the first thing to do is to add salt to the water. Then we stir it. Now we test it and we just take a sample of the solution to this container and we test it using a piece of cloth. can see that obviously the cloth doesn't react, there's no decolorizing, the cloth doesn't change color, it's still pretty much the same. So the next thing we do now is to attach the electrodes and turn on our switch. Okay now let's see what's happening at the electrodes. As you can see, hydrogen gas is released at the copper cathode why chlorine gas is released at the graphite anode and that's the more reason why this experiment should be done outside so i'm going to leave it for a day i will come back tomorrow to check for any changes this is the second day of the experiment the electrolysis is still going on and you always remember to ensure that the electrodes are as close together as possible you will notice my solution is very dark because my graphite anode has depleted so bad but that's not actually a problem because I can always get more anodes from maybe pencils or batteries also if you look at the solution it seems to have acquired a yellowish coloration where it's not so clear because of the black stuff inside but that doesn't mean the bleach is ready it has to be left for a few more days before you can see it's ready and don't worry about the black stuff that is inside or maybe inside when you do your own experiment it can be easily removed by filtration. So we just wait for a few more days and then we disassemble the setup. A few days has passed and I'm satisfied with the solution we have here. So I'm going to disassemble the setup. And if you look at the solution, you, are, you see that it has acquired a yellow color in contrast to what it was the first day we started. So now that I've stopped the electrolysis, let's move inside for the filtration. While it's filtering, I'm pretty sure some of you are wondering why sodium chloride changed to sodium hypochlorite just by the use of electrolysis. I remember the last shot that I uploaded, I said that hydrogen and oxygen gases were released at the electrodes. But in this video, I said that hydrogen and chlorine gases were released at the electrode. So why the difference? Well, 
To find the answer, subscribe and stay tuned to my channel to be updated on my latest videos. Now that we're done filtering, let's test it. I'm going to use the same red material that I used earlier. So now we put the material inside the bleach and allow the bleach to decolorize it. Let us give it some time. Uh, this just reminds me that not all dyes are sensitive to bleach. Some may prove stubborn and their color change may not be noticeable. As you can see on this material, it hasn't really bleached. But that does not mean that this experiment has failed, as I will show you with another material entirely. Just add another sample of bleach and add this material. I'm using a yellow cloth. Allow it to soak and give it some time to see whether the vernier color changes. Give it some time. Now that it's bleached, you can see that down here I've got some is white that's bleached, while up here it's still yellow. That means that the experiment didn't fail. You see, this is the bleached part. This part wasn't affected by the bleach and it retained this color and it's still yellow. Okay, that means this experiment is a success. Now what we want to do is that we want to store our bleach for household use. To do that, you add or you dilute the bleach with water. So to about, let's say, 100 ml of the bleach that we have. Uh, a little too much. So about 100 ml. I'm going to add like 200 ml of water to dilute it. Okay, and let's just tear that up. Now you have done that. What you do now is that you store it in a suitable container like this container we just get our bleach inside there we go lock it and now you have your own homemade bleach I already labeled my own as you can see bleach active ingredient sodium hypochlorite by D aspiring chemist but if you want to use it for laboratory usage there's no need for you to dilute the solution rather you just pour your bleach into a dark container like the one i'm using here sodium hypochlorite decomposes on the shelf so it's important for you to store it in a dark container and also remember to add sodium hydroxide if you have adding sodium hydroxide helps to reduce the decomposition rate so just a few drops of sodium hydroxide to your bleach and then you cap it up and now as you can see sodium hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite has many uses to an average chemist so in my next video i'm going to discuss about the uses and chemical properties of sodium hypochlorite thanks for watching